hi guys welcome back to my channel you're chilling with your tina chills you're chilling with me guys if you're new to my channel don't forget to like first up and foremost don't forget to subscribe comment down below tell me if you like the video what you want to see and all of the above now guys ladies and gentlemen uh, today is just going to be a sit down topic about the immigration process that I took to bring my husband, uh, for all those that don't know, Tyrone, beautiful baby, Afrikaan. I won't say that, but that sounds very cringy. But anyway, yeah, as you all know that um, babe just recently migrated to Australia from Jamaica. And so a lot of people that are in interracial relationships, or not just interracial, but are in a long distance relationship and they're trying to bring their partner um, to their foreign country. So let me just start off by saying the process is not an easy one. It is extremely difficult, extremely hard. Therefore, hence to say that I went through an immigration lawyer because I potentially was going to do the process on my own but it turned out that um, it was just a lot easier just to get an immigration lawyer to pursue that and what I wanted out of this um, out of this you know what we both wanted out of this relationship um, so guys it's gonna be a long one so sit back get a coffee uh, you know a cold drink whatever it is that you fancy and come and have a chat with me about the immigration process and the immigration process to Australia. So guys, as you all know, that um, Babe just recently migrated from Jamaica to Australia. And the migration process for us was a little bit more extensive due to the pandemic and Australian borders being, you know, in lockdown. Uh, now of recent times things are starting to open up and people are able to travel again and you know see their loved ones but I know that I haven't been fully full on with my vlogs as you know I also live a busy lifestyle I'm a mum and you know I also work so it's it's difficult <laughs> at this present time but I try to bring as much as I can when I do um, so okay so basically let's start from the beginning so in 2019, um, October 2019, I went to Jamaica for the second time and me and Babe, we spoke about um, lots of things, you know, as you do as a couple, you, think, you speak about, you know, um, you know, prior to me coming back to Jamaica for the second time, you speak about marriage, you speak about kids, you speak about all those lovely things that comes in, in a relationship. And so, you know, we spoke about, um, you know, children in particular, and and pe a lot of people may miss have a misconception and think that Ireland was um, accidentally made or mistaken made or I don't know, but he wasn't. He was definitely planned. We did plan to have Ireland. Ireland is a, is a planned baby. Um, for all those that didn't know. Now you all know Ireland has definitely made it in the world because he was planned and we were ready to have him. Um, the circumstances around the virus and uh, around, you know, the immigration process was difficult, um, but we came out on the other side and we came out stronger and better and, you know, so let's get to start with. Okay, so 2019, second time I was in Jamaica, was over there, you know, having a really good time with Babe, enjoying our trip, and um, I came back from Jamaica, and the first thing I did was I contacted a migration agent, and I wanted to bring Babe here as a tourist. Um, though, because, you know, obviously, um, there's a lot of things, hence to uh, a tourist visa and what you need to provide to get that tourist visa. Now, um, one of those things is employment from both, from both ends. And also, um, you know, the Australian government's reason to believe that you're a genuine and that you would, you know, return back to your home country. So, 
um, you know, we applied for one of those tourist streams and, you know, fingers crossed we hoped that, you know, we would get through. But by December of 2019, um, you know, chances were very slim. You know, I paid a good thousand dollars to this immigration um, agent that was going to, you know, help me try and bring babe here um, under a visitor visa. The most difficult thing is because we're not, we weren't married, we weren't married at the time and we weren't, um, we were engaged but we weren't, we hadn't been married and also there wasn't really anything for them to um, base him on, uh, you know, because his employment isn't, wasn't like, you know, something for them to say, oh, okay, you know, he's going to return back to his home country. So they declined that first visa. That first tourist visa, they had reason to believe that he wouldn't return back to his home country. Anyway, so that's okay, you know, we thought, oh, well. Anyways, um, around about December, yeah, November, because I got back from Jamaica in 2019, November, about the 14th, 15th. And around like the beginning, end of October, of November, sorry, um, I found out that I was expecting Little Island Boy. And so Little Island, um, you know, was in my belly and I felt very unwell and very sick and everything else and very excited because we wanted this so badly. We just, we couldn't wait to have our own child, you know, we just wanted to have our own little bubby and, and that was it. And so the rest was history after that. So there was one day that I, you know, um, was just really upset, you know, obviously hormonal and everything else. And the whole, you know, nine months was really difficult because, you know, you're trying your best to bring your partner from overseas during a pandemic and all the rest is just, was the most hardest thing to ever encounter and I never wish this upon anyone but there are people that were on the same boat as me um, which was really difficult for them as well uh, you know in a sense I kind of thank goodness for social media like Facebook you know there was a lot of groups at the time that had generated because of the pandemic and people were trying to bring their partners here and stuff so you know that helped me a lot and it kind of strengthened me to keep going and just keep pursuing what I wanted and what we wanted basically um, so okay so we applied for another um, tourist visa this time I changed migration agents and I said look I want someone that's gonna be real someone that's gonna be legit I was really angry from the first time because I just thought that the person didn't fight enough for us so second um, tourist visa was also declined. Now, by this time the pandemic got pretty, pretty bad and Australian borders were just about to close. So they said that there was not gonna be any more pr prospective marriage um, or prospective proposal marriage um, visas. So they put a hold on all of those. So everybody that was engaged, ready to get married or whatnot, weren't allowed to come to Australia. Just that was it. So I'm like, well, if you can't come here on a tourist visa and you can't come here on a proposal, you know, on a proposal marriage visa, and I really want to be with him, and you know, Ireland was born on July 2020, 31st of July. For all those that don't know, baby Ireland was born on the 31st of July 2020. He was actually supposed to be born on the 5th of August, but they induced me because they thought he was a big baby and they thought that maybe I wouldn't handle it very well. So. Anyway, they induced me at the, and 31st of July, baby Arlen was here. Now, um, we're gonna track back to the bit where I applied for another tourist visa for him to come, but they had declined it um, on the basis of um, the same thing that they, would, they, they believe that he wouldn't return back to his home country. Now, though back then there was visas that were getting exempt like so people would get exemptions to come to Australia but the thing is is babe got the exemption but he didn't get a visa so the visa was not let's just say the visa was not nowhere to be seen 
but the exemption was allowed. So now Babe was allowed to come into the country on the basis that he was an immediate family of, you know, of uh, immediate family member of an Australian citizen. So, um, you know, the migration agent, I was really happy with her work because we managed to get the exemption. So we didn't know how long this pandemic was gonna last for and look, it's still here. We're in 2022 and it's still here. And we decided that um, if Babe wasn't gonna be able to get here on time, like get here by Christmas, that Christmas of 2020, that I was going to go to Jamaica and spend months there with him and Baby Island. And so that's what happened. We both um, decided that I was going to take the biggest risk of both mine and Ireland's life because it was dangerous, you know. Um, by that time, I can't even remember what strain virus it was, but it was coronavirus. And we decided that if he wasn't going to come to Australia anytime soon, that we were just, just fed up. We just wanted to be with each other. He wanted to see his son. He wanted to bond with him because remember, baby got to see Ireland being born through a camera lens and a video call. So, you know, there was a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, a lot of downs and, and you know, there wasn't many ups. So we were just really hanging on to hope and we really hang on to faith that, you know, that pulled us through to get to that point that we did. So I said to my migration agent, so if, if babe's not here by December, um, that I'm going to fly out. So I said to my migration agent, what's it going to be for me to apply for an exemption to leave Australia so that I can go and spend some time with Babe? Now, the law was that if you left Australia, you'd apply for an exemption. It's just the same as people coming into Australia would apply for an exemption. And the reason why they were coming to Australia, the same thing as me applying to get out of the country. I got, I got exempted, so I was allowed. Um, they allowed me to leave the country based on, you know, it was t um, three months. So I had to be in Jamaica for three months. So three months or more. So, you know, I said to Bay, well, whatever, you know, we're going we're gonna to do this regardless. You know, I'll make sure that Ireland, we protect him as much as we can while I'm flying with him, this, that. The day that I left, I remember the airports were so empty. There was absolutely nobody. The flights were quite empty as well. It was like crazy. Like it felt like we were in a zombie town, like zero zero zombies. And we were, we were in a zombie apocalypse, you know, we we're in an apocalypse of some sort. And it was just, you know, usually airports are just busy, full of people, you know. Anyway, um, got to Jamaica and everything else. Now, back in March of, 2020 when the pandemic was up and everything was on lockdown and pretty much the whole world was screwed um, I wanted to go back to Jamaica because I wanted to do a gender reveal but also well while I was pregnant I also wanted to um, you know just spend that moment with babe and, and have those couple of months with him while my belly was growing and Ireland was starting to kick and this and that it didn't happen because we went into lockdown so that was that. And also we did plan our wedding as well. Our wedding was supposed to be on a, on a beach, you know, but when I got to Jamaica in December um, of 2020, uh, basically we couldn't get married on the beach because one, it was just out of our budget. And, you know, two, my migration lawyer was quite expensive for all those that don't know and want to know what the Australian migration lawyers are charging. It's pretty expensive. Um, I paid all up from the beginning of our tourist visa. It was a good $6,000, $7,000, right? That's just for them to help me throughout the whole process, including the partner visa that we eventually got um, or given or I shouldn't say given because, you know. So I got to Jamaica and my migration lawyer said, okay, you go in there three months, um, you know, spend the most time you can with your, with your fiance and, and things and, you know, enjoy. And, you know, when you come back, we'll deal with whatever we need to deal with. So we, I did. 
um, decided we're going to get married because um, it was the only real, it wasn't because we had to and it was forced, it was because we wanted to, we wanted to get married from back in March 2020. And so we decided, well, let's go speak to the priest and we'll, you know, organize a ceremony and, you know, family come out and, you know, enjoy the moment with us because I knew for a fact I had to come back to Australia. After three months, it was just like I had to. It, it wasn't it wasn't a choice for me. I had to come back because I had work. I had to go back to work and I had to be able to afford the rest of what was coming next, which was very expensive though I will say thank you to my mother because my mum she was my my rock at this present at that, at that moment where I felt like I was crumbling my mother was the one that was there to support me um, emotionally but not also just emotional but also financially as well so I you know my mum is definitely a queen and she's yeah I'll never ever forget what she has done for me. <laughs> well, I should say for us. <laughs> so, guys, um, yeah, so I came back from Jamaica after three months and I was a wreck because I didn't want to come back. As you all would see, if you haven't already seen, on our family ch channel, the Island Family, um, the departure video that was the most hardest and heart-wrenching and heartbreaking moment of my entire 2021 because I did leave in February 2021 when I had to come back to hotel quarantine and all of those things it was crazy so um, here we go again with applying for another tourist visa because I had told my migration lawyer that um, I wanted to um, you know that not wanted to but I wanted to bring him here over and try again for another visa a tourist visa but we were then in the process of doing a partner visa so the partner visa um, is you know you don't usually get an answer within two years right so it's about yeah two years or two to five years before you can actually get an answer and I just was like no nah. there was paperwork that we needed to fill from both parts I had to fill my letter um, of you know what my relationship was based on babe had to fill out a letter of what his relationship was based on he had to go to Kingston to get all this stuff you know um, filled out um, like from a notary of the public and a justice of the peace and you know it was crazy like there was times where we both were just so stressed out that we just said well we have to do this you know we just got to pull through because if we don't we're just going to be you know we're not going to be together you know we're not going to be the family we want to be so we decided look let's just pull it he'd get on the bus at five four o'clock in the morning um to go to kingston to get to the to the um, notary of the public to get his documents verified so that he can send it back to the migration lawyer here you know, there were so many things, you know, just so many things that were just taking place at this present time. It was just crazy. My letter of, of, of you know, of how we met and, you know, uh, how did our relationship evolve and all the beautiful things, you know, that was just put into words. One of the hardest things because as a human, you, it's very really hard to put things into words sometimes, you know, it's not an easy process. And so... You know, migration lawyer was like, okay, marriage certificate, everything together, put it all into one file and let's work with this. You know, let's got with what we have, we've got it. You know, photos, um, you know, we had to upload photos and of our wedding, photos of family, with our family members from the very beginning, from the very beginning, meaning like from the very beginning of our relationship, meaning they wanted photos from everything. So, you know, if you guys are going to go through the process, because I know there's a few people that are um, living in Australia and are with Jamaicans. If you are going to go through the process, guys, um, just be strong. The only thing I can ask of you guys is be strong because it's not easy. 
Immigration Australia, to migrate to Australia, for one, is not an easy process. It is really hard. You know, it is the most difficult thing ever. And, you know, if I had to do it all again for Babe, I will. I would definitely do it all again. There was no hands down. Everything that we went through with Babe, all the stress, all the ups and downs, you know, I would do it all again. All again, straight up, I would. So as soon as all the paperwork and everything was, you know, put in, um, the migration lawyer said, okay, so Maria, we're going to um, apply for a tourist visa. Um, he's already got the exemption to come to Australia. So, you know, you he's, he's have amended your, your marriage, your nuptials, everything. So, you know, this is it. Within, we applied for everything in March. We got an answer back in April. Um, hang on, March, April. April, May, around April, May. He got accepted. They said, yep, straight, you can come as a tourist, no problem, sweet. Got his exemption, exempted, you know, he'd come to as a tourist, that's it, you know. In the process of a partner visa, he can come. Wow, <gasps> that moment, my heart dropped. It was the best moment of my life. Just like my wedding day, it was the best moment of my life. So, um, it's quite funny that it, didn't, it, kept, it makes me emotional just thinking about it because you went through so much to get to where we are. But the good news is, then it came down because we were trying to look for flights for him to come here and there were absolutely no flights because he had to apply for another visa to get through to America, Canada, um, England, just to get through those state, those countries to get to Australia. It was difficult. So from one high to one low, and it just went, <sighs> anyway, clean my eyeballs. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so then this, then April, May, June. June, we got a phone call, an email saying that Babe's partner visa had been approved. Wow, even better news. But the problem is, is that there was no way for him to come from Jamaica to Australia because he had to apply for other visas to get here. And it was like, oh my God, what do I do? What do we do? How is this going to work? You know, Ireland had already pretty much almost, you know, was one years old. And so we went, nah, we have to, we have to fight for this. So let's do it. Got onto the American website and American website was playing big games with us. He wasn't allowed to come to Australia because the next appointment that he was getting was October 2020, 22. 2022 was his next appointment for a transit visa to come to Australia. Now, that's literally this year. Ireland would have already been two and a half years old. Like, well, yeah. What the heck? No way. So, no, we said we paid the 160 US dollars, whatever it was, and that stayed. Okay? There is, you can't get reimbursed. The only way you can get an emergency transit visa because I rang the uh, American immigration and this and that was that if something was like dire straight. So if someone was basically dying or something, then he was able to come on an extra is extradited tourist um, or a transit visa. So, you know, didn't happen, right? Then uh, we said, okay. Let's try Canada. We tried Canada. We applied for a, a transit visa through Canada and Canada still to this day has not gotten back to us. Has said whether he's got the transit or not. So there you go guys. You can tell that was a lot of shuffling and buffling around with this visas and just trying to get him to Australia. It was hard. It was very difficult. So then we tried England, right? Now, there was fine print that a lot of people have speculated that he was 
needed a transit visa because he was staying in London and all this sort of stuff. Well, it turned out that he doesn't need a transit visa because if, if he's already got an Australian visa, which he did, then he was able to come to Australia without applying for any visa, right? So I rang immigration in England and Immigration England said that he didn't need a transit if he had an Australian visa, whether it was a tourist, whether it was a partner visa, whether it was a proposal visa. Mind you, the proposal visas were scratched out in Australia because they're like, nope, pandemic, scratch out something had to be scratched. So workers visas, proposal visas, um, student visas, all of those visas scratched out. The only things that were accepting were partner visas and tourist visas for certain circumstances right so you know family death family a death of a family member or whatnot crazy things guys crazy so um, as you all know babe went through hell getting through as well just you know at Montego Bay the lady that treated him like he was the scum of the earth because she thought she was doing the right thing but she wasn't because she wasn't reading her policies right that was with um, not Virgin Atlantic because they allowed him on the flight but it was the other airline which I completely forgot now but doesn't matter you can go back to that video on the island family and check it out if you guys want but yeah it was crazy it was the most stressful time for babe and it was the most stressful time for me because at one point I was telling babe he you know he might need to go back to you know Portland because you know I was like you know we both were like struggling you know because I just went back to work and I was helping him out you know with accommodation in Montego Bay you know which he had to you know we had we both had to fork out for that you know there was a lot of things that were just going on and we're like you know what we're not giving up we are not giving up and the, and the reason for me doing this video today guys is because ladies and gents don't give up it doesn't matter what it is in life, don't give up. You've got to fight for what you want. And if it's love that you're fighting for and that's what you want, then that's what you're going to get. You know, did that even sound right? Hang on, wait. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, um, stick in there. Stick in there, guys. You know, uh, fees. Uh, are all ch are changing every year. Immigration law fees here are changing. Um, immigration law, immigration fees here are changing every year. So I can't give you figures, right? But just know that yes, it was an expensive thing. Will I do it again? Yes, I would do it again for Babe. I would. Um, you know, stress stressing out for a good seven months. Um, a good seven months before being reunited with Babe was worth it because they'll go where it, where we are now. Um, we still have, you know, lots of things that we want to accomplish together as a married couple, you know, um, I definitely, you know, believe that we're both in this for the long haul and, um, you know, we're going to grow old and grey together, right babe, you know that we're going to grow old and grey together. <laughs> And yeah, and we'll get to see Ireland grow and become the star that he already is. And you all guys will get to see that as well. So guys, if you like this video, please let me know. Comment down below, um, you know, what you all guys think. Oh, but I forgot. Let me just backtrack to... So when we found out that he can come to in through England on a, on a transit visa, like on, on transit, but in transit... Um, it was, I was so excited once again, it brought me back to all the good vibes, all the good endorphins, this and that. The day that they refused him at the airport, that shut me down again. It was like all these ups and downs, all ups and downs. So, as I was saying, you've got to stand up a fight. You can never give up. If it's what you want, don't give up. Anyways. With me saying all of this, da 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 da. <laughs> if you like this video, tell me, um, comment down below. Let me know what other vlog you want to see, da 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 da. And yeah, let us know what's up. All right, guys. So, thank you for chilling with me today. You're chilling with Latina and chills with Latina. 
so big up guys and blessings to you all and thank you for staying with me you guys are awesome and for the next one i don't know what's next maybe cooking maybe shopping i don't know we'll see so thanks guys bye